it's time to put three generations of Ryzen 7 CPUs up against each other to determine how far we've come in terms of overall performance and whether or not you should consider upgrading. Today's battle is between the following three processors, 7700X versus 5800X versus 3800X. Let's get started with the price. In February 2023, you're spending about 340 to 350 US dollars on a 7700X, whereas the direct predecessor 5800X goes for 240 to 250 dollars. Pricing of the 3800X due to the product's age has gone out of control, which is why I won't be naming any here today. Cores and threats. Not surprising at all, AMD has hardly changed anything here. We are still looking at 8 cores and 16 threads throughout 3 generations. Specifications The AM4 CPUs, on paper at least, seem to offer fairly similar clock speeds. Only with the AM5 CPU, the chipmaker is starting to speed things up. The TDP of the theoretical 105 watts remains identical throughout three generations, even though power draw and temperatures paint a slightly distorted picture in real life. Other than with Zen 2 and 3, Zen 4 CPUs now come equipped with integrated Radeon graphics. Test setup. The 7700X I'm installing onto the fancy ASRock B650E Steel Legend motherboard, while the 5800X and 3800X go and share the very same board going by the name of ASRock X570 PG Velocita. The usual ASUS RTX 3090 Tough Gaming OC is taking care of moving around pixels on screen, that's the GPU. For the AM5 system I went with the Kingston Fury Beast RGB, DDR5 6000MHz CL36 RAM, 32GB of it, and over at the AM4 side we're looking at G-Skill Flare X DDR4 3200MHz CL14 16GB memory. I did pay close attention so that the capacity does not have an impact on the test results. Clock speeds. I'm not left with any other choice other than to praise AMD here. There didn't change that much between 3800X and 5800X, but the clock speeds see a pretty major increase with the 7700X. We are talking over 5.1 GHz on all cores at full load. Things continue being as impressive even when glancing over to the max boost clocks of Zen 4. Pretty impressive what's achievable here. Performance, productivity. Cinebench R23. Zen 3 as opposed to Zen 2 in the multicore test managed a 20% gain. Zen 4 is even capable of speeding past Zen 3 by not too shabby 26%. Once we compare single core performance, Zen 3 sees a nearly 20% improvement over Zen 2. Zen 4 is then taking it up a notch, as usual, and offers 25% more over Zen 3. 7-zip benchmark. Here Zen 3 is about 17% faster than Zen 2, but Zen 4 is even 29% quicker than Zen 3. The V-Ray 5 rendering test shows a 35% lead of Zen 3 over Zen 2. We see a slightly less impressive lead of about 25% when coming from Zen 3 to 4. In the Corona benchmark, the 3800X and 5800X, for whatever reason, go neck and neck. Only once the 7700X enters the ring, we start seeing first major speed improvements of roughly 33%. Blender makes Zen 3 perform 13% better than Zen 2. Zen 4 is 31% ahead of its predecessor, Zen 3. Now in the handbrake video encoding test, Zen 3 is completing its task about 13% quicker than Zen 2. Zen 4 is doing its job 22% faster than even Zen 3. Vegas Pro 20 goes to show a fairly linear result. Here a 5800X is rendering 19% faster than the 3800X. The 7700X on the other hand is rendering 23% faster than a 5800X. Gaming. In 3D Mark Time Spy, Zen 3 manages a 15% lead over Zen 2. Zen 4 is overtaking Zen 3 by 23%. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Here Zen 2 and 3 appear to once again go neck and neck, which seems odd. 
that way the 7700X catapults itself to the very top by a 51% lead on average, and similar 52% as far as 1% lows are concerned. Things appear to be more civilized in Borderlands 3. Zen 3 offers 37% higher average FPS over Zen 2 and 28% more in minimum FPS. Coming from Zen 3, Zen 4 achieves a 9% FPS gain and even 21% in the 1% lows. Cyberpunk 2077 forces the 3800X down to its knees, so we are practically speaking of a CPU bottleneck. A 5800X is delivering already 29% better FPS on average and impressive 39% in the 1% low department. The 7700X in turn takes it to the next level compared to the 5800X, ultimately being 17% better and even offering 25% higher minimum FPS. Far Cry 6 is outputting epic results. Zen 3 obviously performing 21% better than Zen 2 here, also offering 18% higher FPS and lows. A 17% gain is what Zen 4 is capable of, that's even impressive 35% more in the 1% lows. In the title Forza Horizon 5, there's actually not many FPS separating the 3800X from the 5800X. From one generation to the other, we're looking at a mere 9% improvement. At least, there's 11% in the 1% lows. A performance gain of 17% is witnessable when coming from Zen 3 to 4. Here we are even talking of a whopping 37% as far as minimum results are concerned. GTA 5 then usually brings less interesting results to the table. Clearly a 3800X hits a hard limit there once more, a CPU bottleneck. A 5800X already offering 32% more, 15% in the minimum department. We only get to see a mere 4% gain when transitioning from Zen 3 to 4. Comforting, at least, is the 16% gain in 1% lows. Horizon Zero Dawn. Zen 3 is 17% ahead of Zen 2, the minimum FPS remaining practically identical though. 23% more frames per second are achievable with Zen 4 over Zen 3. This also clearly shows in 1% lows almost a 51% improvement. Slightly strange results can be seen in Metro Exodus, while with Zen 3, we see a 7% lead over Zen 2, as far as the averages are concerned, but once we glance over to the minimum values, we see a nasty drop. Honestly, why it is, is beyond my comprehension. I've rerun tests more than a few times. Things go more smoothly with Zen 4, a 9% higher frame rate over Zen 3, and 47% smoother 1% lows. Moving on to Red Dead Redemption 2. Zen 3 capable of putting 13% more frames onto the screen as opposed to Zen 2, but seeing a decline in the minimum department once more, at least at full HD. Zen 4 being only 10% faster than Zen 3. To make up for it, there's a pretty respectable gain of 28% in the minimums. So let's get to the next game title, Rise of the Tomb Raider. It's clear the 3800X once again is the bottleneck. A 5800X is performing 27% better, 39% better when it comes to 1% lows. A 7700X is offering 16% higher FPS over a 5800X and even 29% in the low results. Having arrived at the final game for today, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Zen 3 manages a lead over Zen 2 by a noteworthy 25% on average and 34% in terms of lows. 9% is what we are seeing coming from Zen 3 to 4. The FPS gain of the 1% lows is the most magnificent here though, 42% gaming average FPS. The average of those 11 games I've tested clearly goes to show that Zen 3 on average is doing 20% better than Zen 2. We are talking of slightly over 14% when it comes to those 1% lows. Moving from Zen 3 to 4, we witness a smaller bump in performance. That's 15%. In turn, we are dealing with an outstanding 34% gain over at the 1% low department though. Power consumption and temperatures. Here I have good and bad news for you. 
let's start with the good ones. While the power consumption throughout three generations of Ryzen 7 processors did increase, it's still acceptable, meaning the 5800X drawing 12% more power from the wall than the 3800X does. The 7700X on the other hand then draws 9% more than the 5800X. So while I wouldn't go as far as to call this praiseworthy by any means, considering we're seeing a noticeable uplift in performance, this is acceptable. Now let's deal with the bad news, that being the power draw at idle, basically while doing nothing. While Zen 2 and 3 consume a similar amount of power in the range of 60 to 70 watts, a 7700X based on Zen 4 already draws around 80 watts despite still having the same core and threat count. From Zen 3 to 4, we are talking of an increase in idle power consumption by 27%. Temperatures too have increased from one generation to another, the most significant jump being witnessable on Zen 4 once again. 95 degrees Celsius, according to AMD, is an intentional temperature target though. However, I'd like to point out that Ryzen 7000 CPUs allow for some pretty good manual optimizations, leading to noticeably lower power draw and temperatures. Even with the 7950X flagship, I managed great results there. Conclusion. Clearly, Zen 4 just has to offer more than its predecessors. As so often, we are witnessing the most noteworthy performance improvements in the aspect productivity such as rendering, video encoding and the like. So those of you that are dependent on that kind of workload within this specific CPU performance tier certainly could give upgrading a thought, especially if you're still an owner of the 3800X. Those of you, however, that purchase a CPU of this performance tier usually are gamers that simply wanted to future-proof by going with more cores. There certainly have been made major improvements between Zen 2, 3 and 4. So one could certainly state Zen 4 in the case of the 7700X is capable of offering a significantly smoother gaming experience. At the end of the day, it depends on the graphics card you decide to pair your CPU with. A Zen 2 based 3800X when paired with an RTX 3090 for instance, on average, will be on the brink of posing a CPU bottleneck. You're still doing fairly well with Zen 3 though, a 5800X. So those of you that still play around with a 3800X but plan on getting yourselves a fancy, modern high-end GPU could or maybe even should consider upgrading to a CPU that can keep up except if you'll be gaming at a resolution of 4K UHD anyway. Other than that, I would still somewhat refrain from a CPU upgrade coming from the 5800X. Of course, you'll have to decide for yourselves in the end. My comparison is only meant to assist you in your choice and maybe even satisfy your curiosity. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.